Saquon Barkley. Saquon, how are you, pal? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm doing great, and we've enjoyed seeing you in person the past couple of years at the Super Bowl. It's kind of a strange experience now. It's always nice to be around people directly. What's been the strangest aspect of this life in a pandemic for you? Uh, the strangest thing? I mean, it's just kind of facing what everyone's facing, just um, not being able to, to go to the regular world and, and kind of being locked in uh, in the house, I guess you can say. But um, even though it, it's been weird, uh, definitely – um, there's a lot of positive uh, things that came from it. You know, you can spend more time with, with your close uh, close ones, your loved ones, your family. Um, and it forced me to do some things around the house that uh, I was kind of pushing aside. And like, for, for instance, uh, to build a, a gym uh, in my basement, a place where I could uh, train last off season and now right here, obviously with, with my rehab and, and, and be able to rehab also too. Strange football season, too, but the NFL got all the games in and it came down to the last weekend of the regular season for your New York Giants. What's the mindset among your teammates, given that the team was in play for a playoff berth going into that final Sunday? Well, I think you got to look at it as the confidence has to be high, uh, especially coming into next year, uh, even though our record. Uh, wasn't where we wanted to be, and we didn't start the year how we wanted to start. At the end of the season, we still had opportunity to get in to make the playoffs, and that's honestly the goal. Um, you, every, everyone wanted to play for Super Bowl, but you can't do that without winning your division or without making to the playoffs. And we had the opportunity. Um, we played Dallas. Um, those boys came out, and, and we balled, and um, we came out, which was basically a playoff game for us, and, and won. Um, obviously, the things didn't go the way uh, we would like it, but the mindset for us is, we got to learn from that, learn from that experience. Uh, don't put um, our future or our faith in another team's hands. And um, we got to come off strong, uh, really focus on this off season, and, and um, we're getting stronger, getting ready for the season. And then obviously I don't know what's going to happen with OTAs and everything. But when we are allowed uh, to get back together, um, really focus and lock in and, and try to start off right. You obviously had a disappointing season because of the injury. What have you learned the most about yourself through the process of surgery, rehab, and just not being able to do the thing you love to do, play football? One, I learned I'm resilient. Um, you know, you kind of think you are and you, you kind of tell yourself you are um, until a moment comes and, and knocks, you, knocks you on the ground. Um, and, you know, every single day I, I know – um, how I'm attacking it, and I know my mindset, and, and, and trying to get one percent better every single day uh, with the help of my teammates and the help of the trainers and patience. You know, uh, I'm a guy that always was trying to go, 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 let, let's go, let's go, and and now you got to be smart, especially during the rehab process, and um, you know it humbles you, it humbles you. You know, you got to retell yourself how to walk. You got to re, you got you kind of start, you start start from square uh, square root. You start from the floor all the way up again. Um, before you can get all the way up and stand up again. So uh, it teaches you, it humbles you, teaches you patience, and it shows that um, I'm resilient. Not only am I saying I'm resilient, I'm coming, I'm showing myself every day. I'm having that um, that that battle. I'm competing with myself um, every single day so far. Saquon, tell us how that experience turns into something tangible, something positive that you can use to be a better player when the time comes for you to put the uniform on and go out there and, and carry the football again? Well, you get to see the field differently. Um, watch it on TV or, or watching it from the stands or watching it from the uh, uh, up in the booth. You get to see the, the game different. Um, you have a different appreciation of it uh, just because it's been taken away from you. And, you know, you, you're forced to work on things that you may have not worked on before. Um, you know, you always say you focus on the little things on the little things, but – um, you know, you, you might just be focusing, you might be thinking you're focusing on the little things and attacking the weight room, but you're only focused on all the big muscles. You're not focusing on all the little muscles that, that uh, have a, a, a key impact on how you are as an athlete. So um, for me, uh, with starting from, from ground zero all the way back up, um, just focusing on the little things and the things that I, I wasn't as good at before um, injury and try to improve with that and make that a strength. And hopefully uh, whenever that time is again, I'm on the field, um, I can I can show that. I saw that you said recently that you plan to do some workouts with Odell Beckham Jr. He's obviously going through the same thing. How helpful is that to have someone that you can compare notes with right now, real time, not somebody who did it last year, or the year before, but somebody who's doing it right now? How much does that help you? 
Yeah, it definitely helps. I mean, it helps to have anyone that uh, experiences injury, um, whether I'm talking to uh, AP or even, you know, one of my college buddies, Mark, uh, who, who tours ACL um, in college and having conversations with him. But, well, oh, you know, especially – uh, someone that, you know, we respect each other's games, but not only do we respect each other's games, but we're really good friends. And um, to be able to link up and, and and rehab together for a little bit, I think this is going to benefit both of us. Adrian Peterson's the ultimate example. My goodness, he tore his on Christmas Eve, and he was good to go week one the next year and almost set the single-season rushing record. What's he told you to do and, and to, to how to handle this going forward? Um, he, he told me you're going you're gonna to find out that you're going to come better from this. Um, wherever it's not just only football, um, but off the field, whether it's in, in your life, um, whether it's mentally, um, but also in football, you you become better in this because you are focusing, you're forced to to train muscles that you may have not been training um, as much as you should have in the past, um, and you just get a different understanding of it, understanding of your body. Um, so for me, it was just asking a lot of questions uh, with the doctors and the trainers and then and seeing where, you know, the, the steps that they want me to take um, and how much they want me to improve and, and attack it. You, know, you got to attack it, but you got to attack it smart. And that's something that he told me. And um, it, it, I'm very fortunate enough to be able to have a guy like that that I can, can reach out and, and call any single time and, and know exactly where he was throughout his, uh, his rehab process. We just finished covering a hiring cycle of seven new NFL head coaches. Just a year ago, Joe Judge was one of the new hires. There's still a lot of people that don't really know what to make of Joe Judge and what kind of a coach he's going to be. How would you describe your head coach to someone who doesn't know him? Um, he's a guy that's going to come in here and get the best out of all his players. Um, and it's not just from what he's going to say. He's going to show it, and he's going to get the best out of you. He's going to push you. Um, you know, when you come to work every single day, um, you're going to find something that you're going to get better in, um, whether it's on a football field or whether it's in a playbook or whether it's just understanding uh, the game as a whole. Um, you know, it, it, even if you you may be a, a well-known running back, but you're going to know special teams. Um, you may be a well-known quarterback, but you're going to know special teams. You're going to know you going to know defense is going to know special teams. We're all going to know uh, what we got to do because at the end of the day, football is a complimentary game. And that, that's the kind of coach that um, I don't think I know that we have. Um, and, and I'm very excited. I wish, um, obviously, I, I could have done a, a little bit more this year, but um, hopefully next year when I'm able to get back with the team, um, you know, Hopefully we can, we can show everyone what we really got. You've got three years in in your NFL career, and you've shown that you can be among the very best NFL running backs. The window's open for a second contract. Do you and the team have any understanding about when that's going to happen? Is there going to be negotiation this offseason, or does everybody just kind of want to wait and see what happens in 2021? Um, to be honest, uh, that's the least of my worries, and then um, that's claiming on my mind right now. Um, to even have that conversation, spark that conversation up. I'm really just focusing on, uh, you know, getting getting this knee ready um, because, you know, I want to be the best player uh, that I can be, hopefully better than I ever was uh, for New York Giants. Well, one of the benefits of being a great player, you get opportunities to make money elsewhere, such as being a spokesman for Oikos. Tell us what you have going on with them. Yeah, Oikos, they're coming out with a, a commercial during Super Bowl, uh, the Pro Face commercial. Um, and the Pro Face kind of just stands for uh, what will you do as an athlete or, or a trainer or, or anyone who goes in, in a weight room. It's that face that you make uh, when you're grinding, um, when you're showing that raw emotion, that tense emotion, uh, where you're trying to set a PR record uh, in the weight room, uh, whether it's bench, whether it's squat. Um, so that, that's a dope little concept that I believe that they came up with. And I would say they're also doing – a program for trainers um, in, in America where you are able to sign up to oikosproforpros.com as a trainer um, and be able to get profits, 100% profits actually, um, in February, uh, whoever was able to, to donate, and then also up to $1,000. Um, for trainers, so especially what's going on in this world uh, and the pandemic, I think that's very cool uh, what Oikos is doing, and, and I'm happy and proud to be able to say that I'm aligned and, and partnering up with them. All right, you got to show us your face then. What's your face? What's your <laughs> PR face? Oh, man, you're going to put me on the spot. Uh, I, my face, the best thing I say, uh, you, you, I think, uh, I believe it's in, in, on the Super Bowl, but uh, you, you'll be able to see it on the Super All right. Bowl. Hey, uh, Chris Godwin, your former teammate at Penn State, is going for a Super Bowl ring. Are you pulling for one team or the other? You know, you got friendships all throughout the league. Who are you? Who are you rooting for in this game coming up on Sunday? Um, not rooting for anyone. 
Uh, I know uh, I wish I do wish the best for uh, for Rod, uh, for uh, Chris Godwin, and um, but I think it would be cool for Tom Brady to get his seventh ring. Um, so I would say I, I probably if I had to pick, uh, which I've been forced to pick a couple times, I, I would say I'm picking uh, Brady and the Bucks. All right, well, hey, Saquon, it's great talking to you. We wish you all the best. We look forward to seeing you back on the field. We look forward to see that face in the commercial coming up during uh, the game on Sunday. Thanks, pal. Thank you. Take care. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.